You know, one of the things hunters complain to me the most about in scouting is monotonous terrain. Where everything's kind of the same height, the same level, the same type of trees, all looks the same. And they know there's big bucks in there, but they don't know how to go about getting them. In today's hunt, we're going to go into a large tamarack swamp. And the one thing I want to say about that is scouting those areas is a lot like bass fishing. And that might sound funny, but it's all about structure. You don't go out into a giant lake and just start casting in the middle because there's water there. You look for structure. And that's the same thing you got to do with that monotonous terrain. I started studying uh, onyx for some new properties I hadn't hunted before or been on before. And I found this little piece that is in an area that gets pretty pounded and uh, a lot of pressure on the surrounding properties. And the surrounding properties are really huge and very attractive to hunters. But this one was a little piece off to the side where I think everybody kind of ignore because they're going to look at that big piece. And it had a lot of grass and pine trees you had to walk through to get back to this point. Otherwise, this is kind of landlocked back here. And what I liked about back here is once I got through all that, you know, nothing land where everybody else hunts, I hit a creek that was pretty deep. Had to cross that creek to get back here. And this is dense swamp. Coming through that stuff back here, it is a tangle. And I can't find any human trails coming from that flat public land back here. And I haven't seen no sign of anybody back here yet either. And the one thing I like is when you get back into these spots, I think a lot of people just look at this as like a vast nothingness. I saw this hole in the middle of this dense swamp on the map. I just wanted to get here and look from here and maybe walk the transition line all the way around. But I want to get a good look from here and I want to look out at the cover. And I see these tamaracks all the way around. Until I get into there, I start seeing some big trees. Like just a little bit of higher ground in there. Probably a little opening. Probably adjacent to some bedding. I see some openness right there. See how the tr timber crops and big trees on the edge. That's the spot I'm going to want to look at. Then I come along here. Once again, some big trees intermixed into that stuff. I'm going to want to look at that right there. And then over here, the tamaracks get much more mature, which tells me a little higher ground. So maybe, maybe not. But that and that for sure, I'm thinking are going to hold some deer activity in daylight. Those two spots. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this transition out of here and around. I'm not finding a lot of deer sign in the swamp. There are trails everywhere and hair all over the place, but it doesn't have the type of trees that get rubbed. I'm seeing occasional rubs, but if all you got is these nasty spiny trees that they won't rub, they're not going to rub. So don't expect to see those rubs everywhere. But hopefully we'll see sign when we get into the spots that got, has that hardwood stuff. So let's go take a look. This is kind of uh, the train wise. This is that waterbed stuff that we're in a floating bog. You know, it's got just enough freeze on it to make it easier to walk, but I'm still sinking. You can see there's deer trails back here everywhere. This is going to be interesting. There was a lot of buck sign up in nowhere land like where they do all their pheasant hunting. There's a lot of deer tracks up there telling me they come up there at night and really looks obvious they're coming out of here to go up there. So, big tracks, a few big rubs up there. But I believe they're coming out of here. And this is where I gotta find them if I wanna find them in daylight. Nice sized tree, but pretty low to the ground. But there's some historical rubs along this transition too. I 
Man, this is a tangle in here. There's got to be bucks bedding on this edge in here, in these holes. Yeah, like right there. Look at that hole. You see a bedding hole. Ah, there's a rub too. This one, yeah, there's a historical one again. There's one that was used last year, but it looks like really early in the season. It's already faded. It's a mixture of uh, tamarack and a little bit of tags, and every now and then you'll have a high enough spot for a hardwood. But uh, it's all basically the same. It is a network of deer trails, and you even run into a network of deer beds. I can see where this would be confusing to most guys because everything looks the same. And it's a pretty huge block here. But the deer are going to be on the edge. They're going to be in the little islands of hardwood and stuff that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to keep wandering through here, getting to those higher trees that I can see right now because there's no leaves out right now. And I'm going to go to those, look for bedding in the high spots, look for the transition, the edges. Man, this is exciting. I don't think anybody gets back here. I had to cross two creeks to get back here. I haven't ran into any human sign. Only place was I ran into some permanent stands right on the edge of private properties. But uh, it doesn't look like those people are wading through the two creeks you got to get through to get back here. So, I can say one thing. I'm finding sign back in this big swamp, but not like I was on the edges. A little rub here, a little rub there, one decent rub, an old rub but nothing consistent like I was finding on the edge. So I got through the swamp and now I'm to the spot where I could see some hardwood trees um, right here on an edge. It's not much of a transition. I mean, that's more tamarack and swamp in here. And this is just starting to go into hardwoods and it's a slow transition. But you can kind of see the thick there just kind of opening up as it goes higher ground. And this edge here, even though it's kind of hard to see, now I'm starting to see beds. There's one here, there's one there, there's one over there. I found a couple back in there. And then it goes back into more of the same. A lot of bedding back there, all following that hardwood's edge. And now this is going right for that opening. The opening should be just over there according to the map. I kind of semi-circled it. And I am starting to see rubs too now. There's a pretty high rub right there, right in the beds. Right here, there's a small rub back there, and there's a few rubs back there, and a few historical ones. And this trail goes up towards that opening, and all the other trails in here were kind of in areas where a big buck would have a hard time getting his rack through. He'd come through here along this transition fairly well, and still have that thick to run into to hide. So, you can see hairs laying in here, piles of poop. You see this is used quite a bit. Probably not too recently, but it was used. Probably when this grass was up here. This is probably a thick little dark hole when he was bedding here. So then he's going to come out here and go that way. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to follow him towards that opening and then look for a setup. It's just out of sight and sound of where these beds kind of stop. I don't know. I might find some more beds and sign up further. But as we go, we'll look at what we see, and when we get a distance where we feel safe about setting up, we'll look for a setup, which is going to be difficult in here to find a spot open enough to shoot. Uh, let's just follow this trail and see what we run into. Historical rub, historical rub, historical rub, ooh, a bigger historical rub, coming out of a trail there along the transition. It's actually kind of condensing now, getting even better. As we get closer, a lot of poop underground. The trail just keeps going this way. This is a good area right in here. This is pretty open, but this is really close to those beds. Lots of poop from staging in here. Yeah, lots of piles of poop. And this wouldn't be a bad spot to get to, but 
It's a little close. If I could get in one of those trees and shoot to here, it'd probably be better. Because that would give me a good 50, 60 yards. And you can see when this is full of leaves, there ain't no deer seeing me this far. But this is a nice natural opening to shoot. This ain't bad. There's another rub deer. I like this. Yeah, there is so much sign on this trail. I mean, poop and stuff. But they're just slowly coming through. Oh, here's another cross trail coming out of there. Real heavy. Yeah, certainly this is where I want to be. It's just a matter of what tree. Where I can shoot into here. I'd like to be able to hit this intersection right in here. It's kind of open. I'm thinking maybe one of those trees right there. I'm going to have to look at my maps and see what I got for wind. I think the west wind would blow that way. So southwest would blow that way. So southwest would be perfect, but uh, I think a west would work, even a northwest, just probably any westerly wind, but southwest would probably be the best. Yeah, this is uh, really tore up. Oh, there's another heavy trail right there. Everything seems to meet here. So a lot of these trails probably parallel the opening, which is right over there. So we'd be just in from that open swamp. Yeah, I like this. I think we got to look around right here, see if there's a spot where we can get a hole through here. So one spot found. I like this. This is a good setup. Long ways from the truck if I shoot one, but deal with that when it happens. Look at all that fresh hair. Wonder if we kicked one out of there. Something ran through here knocking some hair off of it. As I circled that bog, I came into this spot, found the beds, then I found the tree, then I determined a trail from that tree back to the bog to use in the opposite when I came to hunt, to come from the bog to the tree without dis disturbing those deer that are in there. You gotta have a plan. You can't leave there without that plan. So I knew the wind I needed, I knew the trail I needed to come in, and I knew where they'd be living. Now I don't have to come back till it's hunting season. Those are the hardwood trees I was looking at from across the opening, right over here. And that's obviously a little higher ground. And this dense swamp goes into a little bit more mixture of grass and, and openings and transition, which create a lot of bedding. And at the mouth of it coming out here, there is just a million trails. I was finding beds on the transition over here, pretty good ones with rub lines going into them, out of this stuff, in and out of here, all coming to the edge of the opening here. And as you can see, there's just one beat trail after another in here. And no hunter sign. I mean, there's really nothing a hunter would hunt in here. I'm thinking that tree right there, that tamarack tree, might be a good starting point. Guy could get right up into there. It's kind of a bean pole, but you could blend in when there's leaf cover. And you could shoot all of this. This is a pretty good spot. I'm going to mark that spot as spot number two. And then we're going to look in here deeper and just see if my mind changes as we look along this transition. But I do think that that would be my starting point. And then maybe I might hit something in there if I don't get something. But I think they're bedding right here. And as soon as you walk into there, it's over. You know, everybody thinks that they're bedding out in the middle of that stuff. I mean, because this goes on for a mile. All the same terrain. And there's sign in there everywhere. But where I found the big buck sign was all along the transition. And I'm willing to bet it goes along that transition too. And everything kind of meets here, which is why all the buck activity would be here, all the deer activity would be right here. There's even beds right here. I mean, it might be night beds or something, but they were bedding here quite a bit, right out in the open. Actually, it's probably when the grass was high, which is when I'm going to sneak in here. But I don't think that's the mature bucks. The sign shows me they're coming out of that, and I think they're coming out of this, and from over there. So I'm going to go down and look at this, look at that. But I think this is my tree. The spot where we were just at, where I was looking at that little tamarack tree, is right over there. There's bedding between me and there that's feeding that tamarack tree. So that tamarack tree would have to be hunted before I came over here. But I marked a spot because getting in here, I know that that first bedding is over there. Not that far, like 100 yards. The first place we looked at. And there's a heavy trail coming from over there. 
Then when I get over here, I can see grass and stuff in there, and that transition of them hardwoods is in here, and that's right there, and there's heavy trail coming out of there. Another heavy trail coming out of there right here. And on the map, I can see another little opening there, but a small one. And it looks really thick. I got a trail coming out of there. And there's a trail coming over here out of thick, and a trail coming out of there out of thick. And they all meet right here in a little open hardwoods area that's almost like an island because it's so small, but not something very obvious to people. The only way you can tell this is different from any kind of distance is you see these trees are up higher than the rest. There's no oaks or anything out here because it's still pretty low land. Still a lot of water around and stuff. But this is more mature trees, more open. And it's just got heavy trails just all coming to here. So I wouldn't doubt it if this is a good spot it's at some time. Maybe throughout the season. I bet your rut this would be awesome. But I want to get a better gist for what's going on here by looking at the spots around that they're coming out of. So I marked the spot in case I don't get back over here. But I'm going to look at that opening and I'm going to look at this thick stuff over here before I make my judgment on this spot. There's another trail. Poop all along it. Come right out of that dense, thick stuff on the edge of the island. This has even got fresh tracks on it. I ran out of time on the scouting trip, so I had to cut this trip short, but I came back a couple weeks later with Jacob to finish up. So we came back to this spot um, where I was at last week so I could show Jacob where all these trails come together. I thought this would be a really good rut spot. Now we got uh, real good bedding over there, and I would assume really good bedding here with the thick cover. But really, there could be some good bedding over here. There's really good transitions and stuff, and everything kind of meets here. And this is kind of like the only open woods where a guy can get a stand in in between. Now the access would be to surround this whole area and walk about two miles and come into here. Um, because the only way you wouldn't interfere with all that bedding. But I think it's not a bad idea. Um, the one thing is, is with the, all the bedding all the way around here, it's kind of hard to determine, you know, which one they're coming in and out of. Um, and Jacob brought up a good point. If we put a cell cam here and monitor it, it'd probably be better. Because then we'd have an idea of travel, at least for the first time we're in here. And maybe they come from everyone, maybe they come from one way for a while, another way for a while, depending on food sources and which bedding they're using. But uh, another thing about this area is, based on the wind, you could hunt this on just about any wind. I mean, if the wind's blowing like this, we get over here in that tree. You know, if it's blowing like that, we get back in one of these trees. If it's blowing like this, we get in one of these trees over here. But you can kind of cover this from multiple directions. What do you think of this spot? I think it's pretty great. I think that being able to cover it from a bunch of different winds is going to be pretty clutch and then identifying right away when they're when it's hot, making your first strike good and then having you set up or me set up in another spot yeah. probably be pretty killer. I think, you know, I think these bucks, uh, people look for them in funnels and stuff and what you really need for rut is a funnel that's really close to more bedding. Because mature bucks just want to go 100 yards or so with the next bedding in a spot that really doesn't get much human pressure. And that's exactly what you have right here. So what keeps a lot of people out of here is this floating bog. I mean, if you look at this, we're actually on an underground lake. And uh, you'll poke a leg through every now and then. And that'll keep people out of here. They don't like walking when the ground's wobbling around underneath them. But the deer don't mind it at all. You look, there's rubs back here all over the place, more up there, and these are all game trails from the deer. So this is what is going to keep those people out of there and attract me to this, because this has the ingredients to grow deer old, because people just aren't going to come back here. Oh, that bowl in the middle of the tamarack swamp is right over here behind us, about uh, 150 yards that way. We're in a pretty isolated area that's got a lot of uh, buckthorn and some elm and maple, but no oak or anything, real low, wet, muddy. But there's a heavy amount of trails right in here. And this little openish area in this woods that's still pretty thick, but open enough for a buck to get through, that kind of parallels everything. Where I would think those bucks would be cruising through here, 
more than just rut. I think they've been here all the time. And this kind of leads towards crop fields. So anything bedding back there that wants to get the crop fields in the dark is going to come through here. And there's literally, I mean, there's a heavy trail here, heavy trail over there. And there's trails coming in from every direction here, all meeting here. And then moving up this funnel, heading towards the crops. I think both rut and when they're feeding on those crops, this is going to be a good area. So what we need to do is find an area where all this gets real tight. Because right in here, I think you'd have, you know, to get downwind of the furthest trail, you'd probably have 50 or 60 yards to shoot to some of the trails. But it seems to be narrowing, so we're going to walk along here and try to find a narrow position for a setup in here. So all those trails seem to come together right here. It's a pinch point, real thick over there, real thick over there. And everything kind of comes together right here. And I think I need to get into one of these trees right over here. And I can cover this pretty good. And I think this will cover all this. And then we can uh, mark a trail back to that uh, floating bog. And I think uh, this would be pretty good. What do you think of this? Yeah, I think this is great. I just, there's, I don't see any way they're really traveling through some of this stuff right here. It's just coming to a wall of cover. Right, and you can see how the deer are coming around that cover. Right. right through this little opening following the trail that they've busted for years. Mm -hmm. I don't see any human sign in here at all. Yeah. Yeah, not a tinks bottle, not a coke bottle, not a beer can, not a bullet shell. Yeah, not even a branch snapped or cut or anything like that. Right, you go down the trails and the trails look just like beat like a human trail, but there's branches going across where a human would break it. Yeah, it almost looks like one of those areas that like wasn't legal to hunt for so long, and all of a sudden they made it legal and deer just naturally doing whatever the heck yeah. they want. It's just exactly what it feels like. I think this is a really good kill spot. Yeah. I think both early season and rut are going to come through here pretty heavy. Yeah, especially when we got... Like if you're setting off to the side here, and there's not there's nothing coming from like the sides like that to like bust you. Right, you can get that west wind blowing right over that thick. I mean, look at this this wall of thick. Right, there's no so way. There's no deer coming through that. So if we get over the top of that and shoot into here, we can come in from over there, mm -hmm. shoot over the top of it, and there's no deer that can ever sense us. I mean, you could actually hunt something like this multiple times. Right. Because the deer got to get over there to smell you, especially if we can find an obstacle like that to shoot over. Yeah, like what I was doing in western Wisconsin, like when I had spots I was building up for years, if this was like a spot that I thought was going to phase in multiple times in the year, and you could tell like which bedding areas are getting hot based on travel, mm -hmm. I would just set a camera over there and just soak it the whole year, yeah. keep it off of the bedding and off of the trail, and just soak it the whole year and see what times of year they're sure. going really hot here. Half <coughs> <laughs> yeah, long there. So this is our tree right here. We get up there, we can come with this thick wall of crap here, shoot over it into there, and that trail is within 20 yards, probably like 15, 16 yards. There's a nice little opening over there too. And I have this wall of cover, so the deer are never gonna get over here. We're gonna come right through this stuff over here from the bog to here. I think this is a pretty good setup. Yeah. I really like this one. Yeah, I like that your wind's not blowing into anything important too. Right, and you've got a natural west wind here. Any west wind is good. Right. You don't find too many good spots like this where you can get in here so easy for a west wind. I mean, it's not easy. It's a long, long walk. Right, right. But it's really not that bad. After circling that whole bog and going through the really, really remote stuff, we started on the other side following that transition and that funnel back towards the human access. And we went quite a ways and even crossed back over the creek to where there's a little more human access. And then we started finding a little bit of human sign. We got like a super old faded out shotgun shan. What kind shotgun is it? Shell. It's a Winchester Western. Number six? Yeah. So it's turkey? not slugs or anything, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's turkey load? Yeah, it's all faded off. I haven't even seen that kind of like emblem printed on a Winchester shell in forever. And what do we got there? We got a old time cola. Old time cola. Yeah, hmm. That's the big brand nowadays, I hear. Look at that top, too. It's got any chew marks in it from coyotes or anything? Very possibly a little puncture right there. Or maybe that's what the shell was used for. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got a shell here and a can. So it's probably the same guy, right? Right, yeah, it's forever ago. So, so he probably uh, leaned against this nasty ass tree right here and shot a turkey. Yeah, yeah. While drinking his cola. Yeah. What a champion right there. That's awesome. Whenever you come across garbage in the woods, pick it up, take it out. Good kid here. <laughs> That's why I bring the bag. <laughs> well, now that we're 
on the back side of the property. We're getting more towards the access trail where people can get back here. As we figured, get the open terrain, more to where people can get, even though this is a mile back, there's a nice easy trail to this end. Now you're starting to see a little bit of hunter sign, but I still think this has some potential for early season. There ain't a lot of hunter sign, but we did find like a, a hot hand thing, probably from gun season laying over there, and a little bit more sign, but not much. But walking along here, I'm seeing a lot of beds and stuff, and uh, looking into these uh, bushes, you can see how right here you see a hole cut into there. I see a dark patch. You look how that would be like a little cave. See that? Yeah. Look at these branches just. They're busted snap. off. Yeah. Going in there. That's a thick branch, too. Yeah. So, now, what you gotta do is put on the detective hat. When is that deer there? Um, one of the first things Jacob said is rut. He thought that buck would be their rut, watching over this grass for the does cruising through here and stuff. And uh, it, logically, that sounds right, but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think he's there when this grass is real high, and when all that leaf covers on there, he's in a little cave in there, early season before there's any pressure back here. I think they're sitting in these little pockets at that time of the year. And I think that's when this is going to be good, is like the first week or so of the season before there's any pressure back here. If you walk along, you can kind of see more of these uh, brush piles, and if we look at them, we'll probably find more bedding. It was no sweet jackpot. Right? <laughs> hey, you see little holes in there? I can't be sure, but I wouldn't doubt it. Here's one right here. You can see it? See the oh, yeah. right there? Yeah, that one's real obvious. Okay, you can see there's no branches or, or leaves there. Nice hole, yeah. But now you think about this, when this has got leaf cover, you can walk within feet of that deer and never know he's there. Yeah. You just hide there. They love those little holes where you can dig your way down in there. You gotta see how he goes in there, and all the branches are busted out going in there. But it's just for a small period of time. Probably right away early season. Yeah. So now, we're getting to the end of the swamp, get a little more into grassy, harder terrain. And I think a lot of those bucks are coming through that way here to go to the crops up ahead, but there's a lot of good bedding terrain here. But I would expect a little more hunting pressure here. So, I mean, we're going to have to look around kind of and see uh, what there is for pressure. So far, we're not really seeing much even here. Yeah. But uh, this wouldn't be a bad spot if there's not a lot of pressure. There's rubs everywhere. There's all these trails that come together here. There's a trail coming out of there I can see coming in here. This one, that one, everything kind of coming together here. And there's this transition they would run along. I don't think this would be a bad spot. Yeah. With all the sign in here. It would be certainly worth a throw at it, you know? Right. And I don't think... We have a lot of setups in here. Right. I don't think we're losing much if deer get busted out of this area, too. Because we already got so much confidence back there. I feel like we're just stacking that bedding well, then. Well, we just come out here early season and give this a couple sits. Right. And if anything, we're just pushing them back. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because our spots from here, back there, are a long ways back. Yeah. So if we stop them from coming in here in daylight and they move back, they're just going to move right to us. Right. But I would throw a couple hunts at this right away over in here. For sure. Maybe give this a shot. Yeah. We walked about 10 yards or so, and I can see that really heavy trail going through over there at 20 yards. And there's this trail, and everything meets here in these grassy stuff where it just comes together and then moves towards the crops through this little opening. I like this tree a lot. For west wind, this would be perfect. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's great. So I don't, I don't have a huge amount of confidence in here, but it's a starting point. Mm -hmm. Come in here and throw a hunt at this, see? I didn't even think from up there with binoculars, you can see over the top of all this brush, you can see into these openings if anything does move. Right. Kind of an observation slash hunting spot. Right, be easy to make an adjustment. Right. Yeah. That thick trail there, trail coming out right there. Hey, Dan, look at this. Looking at all this little white stuff in here, I saw this historical rub here, and they're just littered with cigarette lights. Okay. You got some kind of like pole rope right here or something, like bits and pieces of it. Just cigarette lights everywhere. That is gross. So we got a chain smoker. It might be a turkey hunter actually. Look at this little like piece of cover and a little bit of open stuff on the side. He's not getting in this tree. Though. One, two, three, four, five. 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. So multiple packs. <laughs> yeah, that's just what I caught right off the bat. There's probably a lot more than that. Right. It almost looks like this is might be even a old thing too. Yeah, there's deer hair in this. That'd be a retarded deer, the bed deer <laughs> with all those cigarette butts here. Yeah. You see broken branches in here and stuff. I just think that guy was sitting in here. Right. He was actually probably sitting there and throwing his cigarette butts out here. Yeah. Because that he's got a little blind made, see? Right, right there. I think this is a turkey blind, honestly. Yeah. He had some rope to tie stuff together. So this was one side of it. That's the other side. And then he threw his uh, cigarette butts out the window. Probably plan on shooting here and there. That's People are awesome, aren't they? Right, yeah. Got a little public line there. So here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. Ethically and morally, is that littering? Yeah. hundred percent, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Some people think that cigarette butts are like natural, like the tobacco uh, and stuff. And the, but uh, I think that's disgusting. Yeah. When your uh, cancer uh, sticks all over the ground is just disgusting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you're letting it like crap soak into the soil and stuff yeah. too. What do you guys think? Do you guys uh, throw your cigarettes on the ground, or do you uh, take them back out with you? Yeah, let's hope they take them back out. Me, I don't smoke bad for you causes cancer yeah we got enough of you hacking up your lungs already today. right right <laughs> right I got enough bad habits I don't need that one yeah this, this is where the cigarettes were right this is crazy how much is built up that uh, looks like quite the wall of brush right once again when we get close to the access trail then all of a sudden you do hit a little bit of sign right Oh, they could have a party back there. You could get 15 people back there. You might have quit too. I don't see any. Oh, yeah. If you look, there was a big rub here at one point in time. That's probably when he put the blind there. Right. And there was a rub right by the other one, too. <laughs> the <old rub. laughs> Hilarious. These guys, wherever there's a rub or a scrape or something, let me look at this. I mean, how many people could you fit in here? Half a dozen? I'm surprised. Hey, look at this. Is that a, oh, I thought that was a big buck turd. Oh. <laughs> I'm just surprised there's not like a card table or something or, yeah. or a little grill. You think they'd have a fridge in here? Or, right, they you can know. do much better than that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. No cigarette butts here, so it's not the same guy. Yeah. Cigarette guy just figured if he's 20 feet away from him, it's his spot. Yeah, well he must have like, same thing as like when you see a tree stand, you might as well set up 20 yards from it. This guy must have known something. Now you think about something here. The amount of time it took to pile all that wood up and to go find it. Yeah. Think about all the scent this guy left. Oh yeah. I mean any any deer that's coming out here would be like out of here. You see look at even this tree's rubbed. Yeah. So this guy saw these rubs here <laughs> and then he's like, oh I'm setting up here. And I could probably pretty much predict that those rubs are early season mm -hmm. and that deer was bedding in here. So he set up a blind in the deer's bed to kill the deer. Not knowing it's a bed, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Thinking the deer is coming out of there, because that's what people think. They're coming out of the thick right. when really they're on the edge. You right. know. But just uh, funny. Yeah. I mean, uh, why didn't he just build a house out here? There's a yeah, lot of work into this. Too. I mean, yeah. look at it, look at how thick this stuff is that he cut. That is insane. Holy cow! Oh my! Didn't even notice that. I mean, he definitely could have built a house out of this stuff. Yeah. It's hilarious how collapsed it is now too. I wonder how tall it was when this stuff wasn't rotted out. Yeah. He could probably park his ATV right over there in the garage. <laughs> Yeah, this is insane. So what we're doing is we're paralleling the access trail now. And now we're running into all the hunter sign as you've been seeing. But we are running into a lot of deer sign here too. But we're right adjacent to private crops, which is expected, right? Mm -hmm. But every time we hit these thick walls like this, you see that transition along the grass. You'll see bedding cover and old rubs like this big old rub here. And I can see a fresh one in there. This heavy, right along this heavy trail here, you got this rub here, and uh, one thing I noticed is this ain't orange anymore, it's turning brown. Usually this type of tree has an orange tint if it was like from rut or later. This looks like it was early in the year last year, like early season, but that's what we're expecting. 
as soon as pressure starts hitting in here, you know, like late October, mid-October, I'm willing to bet those deer move back. If we're going to hunt them up here, I think we need to be in here early season. But these little thick covers like this, again, this is a jungle in season. All this buckthorn stuff is going to be solid leaves. It's not going to be open like this. This is really kind of thick. It probably doesn't look like it on camera. But when you put that leaf cover in here, this is going to be a jungle. So that's when those deer are here, when that's really thick and these little caves in here and they can bed in these little spots all on the edge. And if you came walking in here, shoot out the other way and they'd have good escape. This time of the year they wouldn't. For gun season they wouldn't. But I would imagine the first couple weeks of season, they're in here just moving that short window to the crop field. You know, and they can kind of monitor that trail, that access trail that's really right beside us. Mm -hmm. What is it, 50 yards? Yeah, yeah, it's not far at all. So they can monitor the people coming back here and sit back here when this is really thick. I'm betting the people aren't really getting back here in the early season either. Yeah, as we were looking around, there's more rubs even further back yeah. and you can see little bedding holes. Yeah, but, you can uh, see it like a deer's eye level. That is incredibly thick everywhere and right here is open. So I even seen when I was recording that there's some more historical rubs sitting back there a little bit. Yeah, that's the interesting thing too. You get up to head level and your face is constantly getting hit by stuff. But you get down to deer level, and there's little tunnels going through everywhere right. where the deer go. Right. I don't know, Jake. What do you think? It's up to the top of the boot here. Yeah, there's no problem with that. I think what you said a second ago. <laughs> You're like, let's find a different spot. Well, I was worried about you getting wet. Play there. That's pretty good. I think you should just try and jump now. <laughs> Got it. There you go. Oh. Nice. <laughs> All right, let's watch me do it. Sure. You want to throw it? Okay. You want me to keep? It to me. All right. Better make sure you make it all the way across. <laughs> I think it's still. Is it still recording? Yeah. All right. I'm not even gonna try to stay dry. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> okay. Let's go find a. That's one ride. way to do it. <laughs> I stay dry. So I think we covered this ground pretty good. Uh, you learn anything? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I learned that uh, there's not many people that hunt here for some reason. One, that's nice. And two, uh, that uh, low cover that's kind of monotonous mm -hmm. just looked killer. It just looked like they were traveling through there like crazy and. Even if there weren't many rubs there, we were finding big tracks over and over again. Yeah, there's a big sign, just not a lot of it. Right. But there's not a lot of the kind of trees they like to rub. Mm -hmm. So for me, I found that that remote stuff doesn't have any sign at all of people. Yeah. You get a little towards where they got a land bridge to get to it, where it's near crops and stuff, and there's easy access, long access, but easy access. There's a little bit of hunting pressure, but not much. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's good property. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really nice. I think we could kill one here pretty easy. We got some pretty good setups. Yeah, it'd be pretty easy to hunt down, it seems like, too. We just be bumping them back to areas that we want to set anyway. Yep. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah. On to the next one. Remember when we walked up, my doors were unlocked? Yeah. I forgot to lock the truck when we went out there. I got my yeah. bow in the back and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Well, I was just looking around, couldn't find my keys. They're in the ignition. <laughs> <laughs> Someone could be, hey look, it's a hunting beast. I look There's... through all my pockets and I'm like, where could they be? I, and I look in the ignition there hanging. <laughs> you had a moment too to when it, you were waiting for me too. You just I'm not feeling good, I'm a little off. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's hilarious. Well, That's now probably I'm... what it was. Waiting for you distracted yeah. me. Yeah. Left my keys in the ignition. So if my truck would have been stolen, it would have been your fault not I took this new tundra. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Sorry, no, mine now. You just you can you, you can have the payment. You know what I could do now? Truck. I could just put this thing in reverse and take your camera now. You could. People would probably thank you in the hunting beast because they want you to get a new one. I got a brand new one sitting at home on my yeah. desk. Yeah, this one is filming pretty good though. It doesn't look too bad when it's on the yeah. LCD screen. It looks really good.
Oh well. I just I'm not in a hurry to drop the new one. Yeah, yeah. You're new. God, that's so right. much crap in this thing, but oh well. Alright, well good luck. Good luck getting home.